Hi everybody. It's been a while since I've been in the garden. Filming that is. I've been out obviously doing stuff and uh, Barn is back with me as you can probably see. Now again, it's bank holiday weekend. It's a little bit overcast. It was supposed to be a lovely weekend but that's not quite happened. But I've still got out here and actually sown some more seeds, transplanted some more stuff. And I've also prepared the uh, raised bed as well as do a little bit of fence painting as well because I plan to finish the piece of fence here off. And um, I'll just go through and show you actually what, what we've been up to anyway. So come with me. Well, I've been transplanting the seeds into containers now. Down here, for example, I've got the uh, cucumbers set out in these troughs here. Uh, last year, I didn't have much joy with the cucumbers. I had them in grow bags, but for some reason, I didn't actually get any real crops until I actually just planted one in the trough for some reason. I don't know why that was. So I'm going to just repeat that from uh, last year. I've got some spinach in there which hasn't come up yet. I've planted my Charlotte onions here and here and here and again they've taken well they had a lovely root bed on them. Now I know you're supposed to plant them in rows uh, probably six inches apart or whatever but I'm just going to see how they get on in here and hopefully they'll uh, grow to a fair enough size where we can enjoy them there. I've got some sorrel which I've just sown in there yesterday. I've transplanted the kale out and I've put it in little batches like that. I don't know whether that's right or not but um, I'll soon find out. I don't know how big that's going to grow, so we'll just have to watch that. There's some radishes, which I've planted in there. They was in the little container, so you can remember. Over here, we've got the turnips, which are doing pretty well. Barney, come out of the way. So I may have to thin them out and maybe transplant some of them elsewhere, So because they obviously grow in uh, to a fair old size, I would imagine. So I'm going to have to transplant some of them, I would imagine, maybe in, into the raised bed. And we've also got Maris Piper, potatoes there, two lots there, and also King Edward's. And there's another bag of King Edwards over there. We've got some more radishes in there, which I didn't have room for in that last pot there. And I've also sown the lettuce into these troughs as well. They seem to go well in the troughs there as well. I've got my herbs there, which is um, some mixed herbs I had left over from last year in that little pot there, which is parsley. I think there's a few chives in there as well, and maybe some coriander as well. The rosemary's going well, and I've also got some coriander planted there. And I've also planted some basil in the small pots at the front there. And there's them uh, dahlia bulbs there, which you remember I've uh, tried to plant and see if they come up again. So back on the seed tray, I've just got these last row of onions there to go. I've got a couple more cucumbers. And my peas, as you can see, have actually come up. These are the green bee, uh, the, the peas for going outside in, in the, um, the pea area, which I've got. I've still got some tomatoes left, which I'll probably... I've just left them in there for the moment, but I will repot them and... I'll probably be giving them away because I don't really want too many tomatoes. These are all the tomatoes here, as you can see. Here, here, and also over here as well. So that's going to probably do us for tomatoes. And I've also got these little shoots here, which are these red pear tomatoes, which I've transplanted here. These are going to be the red pear tomatoes. So I think I've definitely got enough of them. Them pots there, literally, are just out of them two cells there. So i've got all these still to go and it's so easy to over over sow with tomatoes it's very easy to do that and that's what that's the situation i found myself in last year so i'll probably give quite a few of them away anyway so the savoy cabbage again is coming on lovely now it's um really bulking up now and also the broccoli as well it's getting although it's getting a bit leg long i think that's getting leggy i think you'll find but um the cauliflowers as well are taken well and the leeks at the back there as you can see they are starting to come up now so i'm pretty pleased with them and I've actually sown some pumpkin seeds here, four giant pumpkin seeds there. Now them, as I said to you, I plan to put around the, the side of the green, uh, the polytunnel there, and cut holes in the membrane which I laid down, and um, and put a fence on so that Barney can't run up and down. Now I will protect them with wire at first, but I'm, I'm looking, like last year, I had them in here and I had them in grow bags, and the grow bags really didn't provide enough energy for them to actually grow to any sufficient size. I think the largest pumpkin I got was something like that, and... It didn't grow no more after that so i mean i tried feeding them and but the bag obviously had only so much energy whereas if i plant them directly into the ground which i plan to do then obviously they're going to get all the nutrients they need so that's what i plan for them anyway but i've also sown some cress as well look you can see you can probably see there it's just starting to sprout now and come up but i think what i should have done there was put it in uh, lay some kitchen roll or kitchen paper in there and saturate it to hold the water because in this compost what tends to happen because it's quite a deep well it's not really deep but it's about three inches four inches deep i suppose the water drains from the surface pretty quickly so i'm forever watering in here so that's what's been happening let's have a look at the temperature in the greenhouse at the moment we've got 13 degrees at the moment it went to only 24 yesterday which 
through in here is pretty cool believe it or not and it went down to 1.5 degrees yesterday which is pretty cool still but over the past couple of days the temperature has been up in the middle of the night to about 6 degrees it never dro dropped between 4 or 5 and 6 degrees so yesterday was a back to as it has been that's what I say you can't ever guarantee that the, as soon as the warm weather does come it can drop straight back in no time especially here in the UK anyway so anyway let's let's take you outside and see what else I've been doing Oh, I forgot to show you the rhubarb as well. Look on how well that's come on. Look, that's really, really grown. And uh, that, as I say, that will eventually go outside, as you probably know. But um, it will just stick under there for the moment. It seems to like it under there. <sighs> right, so let's have a little walk outside. He's up on the deck there. Look, Barney, look. As you can probably see, I've got the raised bed, which I've... Um, it's now all prepared, ready for the uh, cauliflowers, cabbages and broccoli and stuff like that. So again, I'm just waiting for it to just get a little bit warmer and then plants to get a little bit bigger. So that's what's happening there. And as I say, coming around the side here, this is where I need to put a gate across here so that this area here, Barney can't just get off of there, Barney. He's running, he's, look, he's, he's all over the blinking rays to bed here as well for the uh, peas. So I will put a gate across there, as I say, and then I'll cut holes, maybe three or four holes down there. I've got four pumpkins. And th they can then run and trail down there to their heart's content. So that's what I plan for that area down there. I finally painted my gate. As you know, that's been unpainted for a while or since I installed it. So I painted that yesterday. And I've also got this fence here, this panel here, which will go down the far end of the polytunnel, which I've literally just had laying uh, against the fence. But that will go to block Barney's roof from getting in down the, the end of the polytunnel there. And I've also got this fence panel here, which I've painted as well. So the whole fence is looking a lot more consistent now. And uh, I want to do this, and I was hoping to get some decent weather today because I want to burn all the rubbish down the side of this side of the poly polytunnel. So it's not going to brighten up enough today, I don't think, to do that. But um, as I say, that's what I've been up to. But I've also been out buying some more lawnmowers here. Let's go out to the front. I'll show you what I bought last night. Two old lawnmowers I've brought. Now, this one's a runner. Now, the deck on this one's totally rotten, so... I'm not actually going to be using the deck, it's just the motor and the, the ancillary bits which I want there. And this one I bought as uh, spares or repair. It's not run for a while, but the deck's all in good nick and everything's there, so it's a self-drive one. I think I paid £36 for this one, and I paid £20 for this one. Normally I'd pick these up in the van, but um, as you know, the van is out of action at the moment. Oh, there we go. Oh, well, there's a couple of handles here, that's handy, look. Didn't notice that. So, pull that one back up there like that. I'll leave them there for the moment. But uh, as I say, this one, he actually started up and this started first time, so this is a, a mower that I can just literally transplant everything onto a new deck. But I've actually got a mower uh, ready for this motor to go into anyway. That was the idea of it, so. And you, you know, I'm going to be using the motor, so I'm going to get the handle free. I've got the box up which I'll be keeping, possibly the wheels as well. So all that is extra. You can't buy that sort of stuff cheap. Put that over there first. Let's get this other one out. I don't really need these, but I just couldn't resist it because they was, you know, they were pretty near to me and it was pretty cheap. So that's what I got for. Now, as I say, this is a, because it's self-drive, this one, it's a hundred pound lawnmower. And it, it's all there. Although a bit dirty. It just needs a repaint and maybe a service. There you go, that goes on there like that. That folds over there. I can sort all this out later on as I say, I just want to pull them back to the garden at the moment. And I'm also going to an auction tonight because there's another one at the auction there which I want to pick up. So, that's where we're going tonight. And it's Bank Holiday Monday so I'm going to be taking it easy. I'm not doing too much today and we're going out with Tracy anyway so. Right, well I'm going to get these round the back now and I'll see you around there. Oh, 
Right, well here we go, here they are, as you can see. This is a little Sovereign. Probably about a 70 or 80 pound mower once it's all fixed up. But as I say, I'll be putting this all on a new deck. And this one's probably a 100 pound mower because this has got the self-drive mechanism. And this is all pretty much solid there, so um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Although I will real paint that deck, I paint these sort of textured finishes when I do them with hammer right anyway. Not hammer right, I do them with smooth right enamel paint. So that really looks like the original finish once I finish with that. And the uh, box and the handle, all that will all be resprayed as well. So yeah, that's what I've got planned for them. So yes, I mean, all in all, there's not much really going on this weekend. Although, as I say, I've been coming out in the evening and just tinkering about with the uh, the poly tunnel and the seeds and that. So um, yeah, it's all going pretty well. So. Once this bank holiday is out of the way, then I'm going to obviously start and get down and start getting... I want to get the van going again. I want to get that moving now. I could have worked on it the weekend. It was a little bit wet over the uh, Saturday and the Sunday. And uh, as I say, plus we was doing other things as well. And I want to get this garden pretty much sorted out now, which we're nearly there. As I say, the raised bed was one of my big things because all them seeds can soon come out of here. And I've also got to get... I had problems last year, as you probably know, those of you who watch my channel, gardening videos that last year I had a big problem with the slugs eating the um, the cauliflowers and the, the brassicas and the like, cabbages and stuff like that. Well I actually bought some slug tape which um, let me show you right there I've I've got some rolls of this stuff which is uh, copper slug tape now apparently snails don't like crawling over copper they get an electric charge off of it so it's apparently it does work but um, what I'm going to do is to put this all around the perimeter of the raised bed and hopefully, I've got about five or six, there's four meters length in this package here, apparently. So, um, let's have a look. Yeah, why is it serrated? Why would it be serrated? Oh, I, t I think what it is, it's serrated at the bottom. So that, if I, I think it's adhesive, I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks to be sticky. But I mean, it's not gonna really stick on a, an external surface like that. So I'll, I'll probably staple it on as well. So I'll staple it around the edge and I'll just flick the edges up so that the little pointed bits are facing downwards so that any kind of crawl ups can have to crawl over the uh, spiky bits as well that's probably what that's all about I would imagine and I suppose that works on the same principle as someone mentioned to me if you if you're planting in the ground for example put broken eggshells or stuff like that because they don't like uh, going over the sharp bits apparently slug so but slugs is a big issue here, and I've got to really get on top of that before I start planting in the raised bed so that's the thing I've got to um, uh, treat the, uh, the slugs with and the snails now last year I did experiment with, someone said put some contact, put a, a, a plastic container into the ground with um, some beer in it or something like that, which I did do. And initially that started to work, well that did work first of all. But then what was happening was that we come out one night and we saw they was actually drinking it from the surface and then crawling away again. So although there was five or six slugs in the actual fluid, the beer, the rest of them were just coming down for a drink and then buggering off again. So they was treating it like their little bar or whatever. So they had beer on tap, so to speak. So I understand the philosophy behind it. They start drinking it, they get intoxicated and they fall into it and that's what was happening. But um, so yeah, I've moved on. And hopefully I've seen this on uh, YouTube videos, this stuff. When they come into contact with copper, oh, they, they sort of shy back from it. So they don't cross that barrier line. So hopefully by putting that around the perimeter, that's what I'm hopefully gonna cure that problem anyway. Uh, as I say, I've got, all these lawnmowers to finish at the top here. I need to start moving now, as I say, because I'm doing so many different things uh, at once. Plus I've also got our other business, which is our uh, t-shirt printing and mug printing business, which Sharon runs as well. I've got some videos which I've got to do for that as well, because I'm doing a review on a product, a new product coming up uh, very shortly. So that's what I'm doing on that side of things as well. But obviously this is a little hobby. It's what we do. This is our normal day. We, you can generate money doing this sort of stuff. As I say, we're off tonight to pick up another lawnmower, hopefully. We picked up two, just local, around where we live. There's, I don't think there's any real excuse, because you get a lot of people say, well, I've, I've got no money, or I can't get a job, and stuff like that, or we need extra money, or whatever. Now, for example, if you're turning over, let's say these two lawnmowers here, for example. I mean, I'll pick that one up for 36 pounds, and the other one, 20 pounds. So that's 56 pounds I had to spend out yesterday. Now, what I will invest in that is my time, and a little bit of knowledge. But I'll be able to turn that one into a hundred pound lawnmower and that one into a, probably a 75 or 80 pound lawnmower. So that's 180 pounds for 56 pounds. That's nearly tripling your money. Now you can go to any bank or building society or whatever and you can never triple your money, especially in a short time like that. 
So just invest in your time. It's either you sitting down watching telly and doing nothing with your spare time, or actually just get out, get yourself, if you might even have the stuff needed, a few tools. Get yourself a few tools, a few tins of paint. All right, initially at first, you probably find that you stop, start, stop, start, and that, when I did, when I first started doing these. But because we've got all the stuff now, We've got a selection of different paints. We've got all the necessary tools. We've got the repair stuff like the, the, the gaskets and the oil and stuff like that. So it's all at hand. So literally stripping one of these down, I think I've shown in other of my, of my lawnmower videos, can take sort of half an hour for the simple basic lawnmowers like you see here. Or you can sit indoors and watch a blinking soap opera for half an hour with, with, with no end result. And you're sitting in there, it's good, good exercise, although you're not doing much physical exercise, just coming out and doing a little bit of moving about, it's good enough. It gets your body working, it gets your muscles twitching, and uh, that's what burns off the excess calories and stuff like that. So, and it's an interesting thing. Now, you're probably a lot of you have got the knowledge of doing this sort of stuff, but you just never be bothered because we're too stuck in our ways. And if you want to change anything in your life, you've got to make the changes. Because if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. And if you want more, only you are going to be able to provide the necessary oomph to bring that extra money in. So you could say to yourself, all right, we can, we can earn a hundred pounds out of these two lawnmowers. hundred pounds pays your mobile phone bill or your, your TV's cable subscription for the month. So think of it that way. And if you can do two of these a month, for example, then you haven't got to pay for your, t your mobile telephone bill or your, your cable subscription or, or, or look at it that way. So that's the way to look at it. And little bits, little chunks, and then slowly you'll, you'll be doing more, and before you know it, you're earning pretty decent money doing this sort of stuff. Maybe as a second income, maybe as supplementing uh, your, a, a part-time income, you might have a part-time job, maybe that you can't get out and do work because you might be disabled or stuff like that. This is an ideal opportunity. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble again, so I'm gonna stop now. And this is just a little update vlog, just to show you what I've been up to. It's bank holiday weekend, so... Um I've been really taking it easy and even today I've just got these out of the car and I've just been, been outside here and give it a little bit of a water. It's the last day of the bank holiday so we're going to possibly go out again today because it's not really too good the weather out here but I'll be back on it tomorrow. Anyway, that's enough for me for now. I've been rabbiting on again as I always do. See you later. Bye for now.